Hey, John here. Let's look at how to set up a new GitHub account and how to configure SSH so that we can do our homework assignments for CompSci 340. All right. Now, if you already have a GitHub account and you want to use it for this class, then by all means, click sign on on GitHub.com. That's where this website is right here and use it. If you want to create a new one for this course or you don't have one at all, click sign up and fill out the usual answer questions and you know, what's, your, what's your login, what do you want to use for your password and so on. Okay. When you're done with all that, you have your a GitHub login, click on sign in and go ahead and log in. So mine is John Winans. Oops. I'm used to typing my name with a space in there. in your password and you're on okay now i use github for a lot of things i have a whole lot of projects in here in addition to this course but the way this has to work is <clears throat> now you may or you may not it doesn't matter you can have many projects going on and once in here now in order to access github for the purposes of maintaining code, you want to uh, take uh, code out of GitHub. That's how we're going to hand out the assignments in this course. You want to submit an assignment for grading. You have to push it back into GitHub. Okay. You need to have a system in place called SSH. If you already have all this configured and you know how you're to use it, you don't need to watch this video. You're already set up to go. But if you've never used it before, or maybe eh, it's not working on Turing and Hopper, and so on keep an eyeball on what's going on here okay that's what i'm going to show you every little de uh, we're going to walk through the process getting a minimally uh correct configuration as simple as possible believe it or not uh set up so that you can do your work all right so once you log into github go in this upper right hand corner here this little down arrow the hiding in that menu is settings okay and pick any one of a thousand headings and have fun. But SSH and GPG keys over in this left menu over here is what we're looking at. What we need to do is put an SSH public key in here. Now you see, I already have one. This is for another project that I work on. You can have more than one. If you already have one in there, like I do, you can always click here and add another one. Okay. First, we have to have one to add. So this is what we need to have. We need to accomplish this, but where do we get the thing? When we hit SSH key, we have to paste the key in here. Where does it come from? All right, I'm gonna put a pin on this and we're gonna come back. Now, I've logged into Hopper. When you log into Hopper, if you already set up SSH, you know what you're doing and this doesn't count. But if you don't know what you're doing, you have to do a couple of simple steps. So the first thing we need to do is we need to generate what's called a public-private key pair. You do that with this thing called SSH key gen, okay? Then you're going to say minus T, oops, if you can type correctly, minus T space ED25519 minus capital C. And then in here, you're going to put your email address, like I'm jwineins at niu.edu, you probably put your Z number in there or whatever you're going to use for your email that you want to use to manage this key. I honestly don't think it gets used for much, but it wants to be put in there. So I type in this command up here. I'm going to take the default. Trust me, don't move it. Take the default. Then you have to put in what they call a passphrase as a password. Okay, this is a password for the key that you're generating. All right now, keep everything straight. Remember, at NIU, you have a Z number and a password that you use to get on the Wi Fi and to access Blackboard. That's different than the password that you use on Turing and Hopper. You use the same Z number on Turing and Hopper than you do for the Wi Fi and so on, but they have different passwords. Okay. This SSH key, we're creating a new thing. This is a third password, okay? You can set them all to the same thing if you really want to. That's not the best, uh, most secure thing to do, but you could if you wanted to. 
this is a new password is my point, uh, different than the other ones. So set it to something. Now it's gonna ask you to repeat it. It's gonna print a little picture and you're done. You've created what we call a public private key pair. If I now forget the passphrase that I used up here, no one, nowhere can reset it. You have to start over again. And you can, it's not the end of the world, but it's a pain in the butt. Don't forget it, write it down, store it somewhere, okay? Because you're gonna need to remember it. Uh, okay, so what have we done here? What this does is it creates some files into this directory called .ssh in your home directory on Hopper. Now I have some other files already in the .ssh directory on Hopper because I have other SSH settings. As you can see by the timestamps here, these files were just created right now. It's January 17th, day before class. This first file here is what we call a private key. Leave it alone. No one gets it, never look at it, never touch it, okay? This one down here is called a public key. I can show this on YouTube, it doesn't matter. This key here is the thing you wanna paste into that GitHub page we were just looking at, all right? ed22519.pub here, that's it. Cat space file name simply says catenated, print it, list it on the screen. Now on my terminal, I can just triple click on it like that and it is copied, okay? I then go back over to the uh, GitHub website where I said, you know, GPG key and so on and I hit add a new key, right? In here, I paste that one in there just like this, okay? I should name it so I remember where it came from. Now this is a little helpful because I, I, it's associated with NIU, but I might call this one Hopper because I created it on Hopper. I click on add SSH key and now I'm done, all right? I have two, you probably will only have one. What this really means is Hopper is now authorized to have a conversation with GitHub, okay? So is some other thing that I use, so what, okay? Once you've got this far, you can now check out your homework, submit it and all that other fun stuff, okay? So we've set up SSH. Now, how do we use it to do our homework? Well, I've got a bunch of files already on my uh, Hopper account. Create a big mess in here. So let's make a new directory specifically for this course. Generally speaking, you don't put new junk in your home directory. You don't put files up there, it's just a big mess. So create a directory like 340, and then inside here is where you would put all your homework assignments. All right, so now we're all ready to get going on our homework. You will receive what we call an invitation that will be posted in an announcement on Blackboard each time there's a new assignment. That will be a URL. Let's open up a new tab in this browser. You'll go ahead and paste into a browser and open up. And you'll get a page that looks like this. You've just accepted assignment number one, Introduction to GitHub. Now, I got a weird error in here. Now, the reason this popped up, I think, is because I already ran it once to test it before I did this lecture. But this is probably a great example. If you ever accept an assignment and then delete all your files and do it again, this might be what'll happen to you. So this is a perfectly reasonable uh, demonstration here. And it says you might want to re-accept it. Okay, fine. Normally, you'd come in here and it would give you a screen that looks like this without that little warning. And it'll ask you if you want to accept it. And now when you accept it, what'll happen is it will create a new repo on GitHub. It'll create a new origin repo, okay? You say accept the assignment and it'll say, okay, we're making the assignment. You can come back here and you can do a refresh or, you know, whatever when it's done. This usually never takes more than like two or three seconds. So I'm going to just refresh the page. And then it says, okay, your assignment, uh, your repository has been created. You can click on this link here and you can then see it. Okay. Now, at this point, you are ready to start working on the assignment. As we'll see in another lecture, uh, when we walk through specifically how to create uh, a new branch and things like that, you'll end up doing something like this. 
and then you're going to create a new branch. This We go over this in more detail at another time. I want to run through the part that deals with the SSH right now, okay? And normally what you would do is you would accept the assignment like I just did. You'll create a new branch like I just did. You'll then go over here, and you'll click on SSH and take this, get a copy of this link uh, right here, okay? It's not really a link, but this is the name of your repo. Once you have this... You go back over to Hopper and type git clone and paste that thing into here, okay? At this time, and this is what I wanted you to see specifically, it's going to ask you for the passphrase that you already created on your SSH key. That's what you typed in earlier, and you better remember it, or you get to throw all this away and start over from scratch, okay? So I type in the name of the password on that key, and I can see now I have cloned my repo, and here's the assignment files. As you'll see, you need to check out the development branch. Oops, git branch minus, I think, v. We'll say, show me all the branches. Or is it v or a? One of these, uh, a. So uh, what did I do? I, I called it dev op mint. So I misspelled it. If this happens to you, you need to go back into Git and create a new one with the exactly correct name. In this particular course, it's okay to have a dead one in there. I mean, you can go in there and you can delete a branch if you want to uh, inside Git. Uh, you see these little garbage cans over here? If I wanted, to, if I did it wrong, uh, Dell Op Mint, I'm going to go ahead and hit this. I'm going to delete this. Okay. It's deleted. Dev Op Mint. I guess I can delete it down here. As, oops. Oh, no. Now they're all gone. <laughs> well, so what? I deleted them all. Big deal. Come back in here and fix it again. D-E-V-E-L-O-P-M-E-N-T. Okay? Did I spell it right that time? Yes, I did. I can't type and talk at the same time. It can be a problem. All right, I got the right name in here. Now... Uh, what am I going to do? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back up here. I mean, I just messed this whole thing up. What I can do, I can just delete the whole thing and start over again. There's nothing wrong with that. If I do this, though, I may have lost a lot of work, okay? So don't screw that up. You don't clone this. you got to go back and get this uh, key in here, right? Just like we did before. All right. I, realistically, this does happen to a lot of students, so this is probably okay as an example. All right, so I just re removed the file and recloned it again. Now I go in here, git branch minus a will list all the branches and now it's spelled correctly. Git check out that branch, okay. I now switched onto the development branch and then you do your assignment. That's the rest of this stuff is in a uh, uh, the next video, okay? So what you need to know before you start working with GitHub is that you have to get your SSH stuff set up, okay? When you interact with GitHub, if you do it exactly like I showed you right here, it may ask you for your um, your passphrase a lot. Okay, the more advanced usage of SSH allows you to type the passphrase in once and then you don't have to do it again. All right, that's just more and more and more sophisticated stuff. What you have here is the minimum set of what you need to do your job. And as it is, the only time you'll ever need to type in your passphrase is when you're doing a pull or a clone or a push. All your other work, you're just editing files on things like Hopper or Turing, okay? And you won't have to keep typing that password in. But when you're exchanging things with GitHub, that's when it'll come into play, all right? So that's all there is to getting everything set up so you can start your first assignment like I just did here, including every mistake you'll probably make <laughs> along the way and how to fix them as you go. So you're welcome for that. <laughs> A little embarrassing, but you know, that's reality. Okay, so thanks for watching. See you next time.